What's up, family? Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Mark the Messenger. We're back with a video. This one's to be about five signs. God is telling you to trust some more. Let's go. Let's go. The number one sign is unexpected storms. And I'm going to talk about this and elaborate on this unexpected storms. A lot of times when bad things are happening in our life, we automatically blame the devil, uh, blame demons, or, you know, we blame that it's all the devil's fault, right? And yes, I'm not saying that the devil can't or these demons can't try to still kill and destroy, destroy your peace, your happiness, your joy, uh, the things that you build it up because we all know what the devil comes to do. But sometimes God allows you to go through an unexpected storm. OK, we look at many times in the Bible. Joseph went through an unexpected storm where his own family did what they did. Um, Job went through an unexpected storm. And Joe, the Bible says that Job was a perfect man and he was rich and he lost it all. So he went through an unexpected storm and I'm sure he wasn't expecting that. Now, the Bible does say that God allowed Satan to do what he did to Job. It was all just a test of faith. Satan said that he was going to curse God and, you know, his wife. Um, the devil jumped in Job's wife to say that, you know, you know, to curse God and all that type of stuff. But Job didn't fail, didn't, didn't. He, he stands firm. And when you're going through an unexpected storm, you lose your job. Uh, someone um, someone in your family or your friend passes away. You know, stuff like that, right? And it's unexpected that you have to trust God more, bro. Like, no matter what, don't blame anybody. Just keep your trust in God. Um, it's unfortunate that when bad things happen in their life, most people, not, not all people, most people, now they want to read their Bible. Now they want to pray. Now they want to seek out God. This is why it's important when you're seeking out God, when things are going good, best believe when you're seeking out God, when things are going bad, you know that you, you built up your foundation. You already have that um, relationship with God. So you, you're not going to be phased by it. Okay. So this is why you don't want to be ruled by material things. You don't want to be ruled by money uh, or things of this world, because the number one thing that should be first in your life is a relationship with God. So when these storms do happen, you won't be phased by it. Okay. Now, of course, you're going to be going through it. You're going to be going through sorrows, tribulation, trials, so like that. But you understand that your faith is firm in Christ and the Most High. Okay. So number two is number two sign that God is telling you to trust some more is you have a lack of something. Okay. Whether it be money, love, friendship, or connections. Okay. The Bible says that who he who gives to the poor shall not lack anything. And I noticed that one thing in America, especially over here in America, it seems like everyone is selfish. No one likes to give. No one likes to show love or social support. I don't know what spirit is roaming around Babylon over here in America, but just make sure, guys, that you're, you have a giving heart, you know, that you're giving, okay? And the Bible also says in Psalm chapter 34, verse 10, it says the, the young lions do... Uh, the, the uh, young lion do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Okay, so sometimes, like I said earlier, we don't go to God until things go bad in our life. So, so God sometimes allow it, okay, because he knows that it's going to get your attention. Okay, so now that God's telling you to trust him more, now he wants you to seek him more. Okay, you got to seek the most high more because that should be the first thing you're doing. That should be the first thing you're prioritizing in your life, seeking out the most high. Number one, uh, number, that was... I mean, this all goes number one, but that's sign, one, sign number two. Okay, so, and also, let's not just uh, these four things too, money, love, friendship, connections. It could be anything else, okay? Number three, the number three sign that God is telling you to trust uh, to trust some more is that you lose everything, okay? This is in Job chapter 34, or sorry, Job chapter 13, verse 15. It says, though he slay me, yet I will trust in him, but I will maintain my own ways before him. So, Job is speaking to God when he says, though he slay me. Okay, Job wasn't speaking to the, uh, talking about the devil or anything like that. He, Job was speaking to the Most High. He says, though God slays me, yet will I trust in him. Okay, so even though he was going through all that he went through, I mean, he went through a lot. I think that outside of, outside of uh, Christ, of course, but outside of him, I think that Job probably went through this, the second worst. Or I could be, I mean, it's all just an opinion outside of Christ, of course, but I think Job went through the most what he went through. And through the midst of it all, he didn't fold. He didn't give up his faith. A lot of people who would be put in that situation, they would have gave up. They would have cursed God. They would have just gave up. But Job, through it all, preserved. And guess what happened? God gave him double what he already had. And like the Bible says that Job was already rich. So God, he was blessings on blessings. Okay, so whenever you lose everything, and this is many times, guys, well, I lost. I lost a lot. Uh, there were so many times where I lost a lot. And I didn't. Get, I didn't allow that to destroy me. Or I didn't allow that to, 
get the best of you. And I just, I just trust in God. So, okay, God's in control. Whatever, whatever situation that just happened, like that I got, I got myself into, or that was unexpected, uh, I know that God is in control. God allowed it to happen. And this is the mindset you want, you want to have. You want to have a positive mindset, even though you're going through hell, you're going through chaos. You want to still have a positive mindset and understand that God is in control, and whatever happened, He allowed. Now, of course. Certain things could happen in your life because you're disobedient. The Bible says, be not deceived. He who sows to his flesh shall be corruption. Okay, it talks about how the blessings and the curses with keeping God's commandments. So, yes, you could, bad things could be happening to you because you reap what you sowed. But if you know you're obedient, you know that, you know, you weren't being evil out here, you know, and doing all these abominable things and that these storms have to pop up. It just got allowing that to happen in your life, okay? Because I, I understand 100% that bad things could happen in people's lives is because, you know, they're reaping what they sowed. And a lot of people, do, they don't take accountability, so they don't, they can't be able to discern why certain things are happening their way, okay? So, yeah, when you lose everything, always keep in mind, when, remember, when it's not that you, like, let's say, you could lose everything, right? But you stole all that. You stole, like, let's say you have have it all, right? And, you, and But you stole all that. And you lose it all. That's not God. That's you reaping what you sowed. Okay. If you steal from someone, you know, people are going to steal from you. If you treat people good, people are going to treat you good. If you treat people bad, people are going to treat you bad. Okay. And stuff like that. Okay. So number four is you get unjustly. Okay. I put this on the top. You get unjustly betrayed by someone you trusted or loved. Okay. We know what the Bible talks about in Genesis chapter 37, verse 23, with what Joseph went through. Okay. He went betrayed. And even though he got betrayed, his own brother saw that he was, he died. Okay. And in the midst of it all, uh, Joseph, he didn't lose the faith in God. He continued to trust God. And look what happened to him. He became the king of uh, uh, Egypt. Okay. He became, he was sitting with amongst the kings and, and, and the princes of Egypt. Okay. And that was a strong um, nation back then. So even in the midst of it all, he still, he still trusted the most high. And look what happened. Okay, his own brothers betrayed him, but he, Joseph was was used. All the dream that he told people, this is why, guys, you have to be careful who you tell things to. Even your own family, even your own brother, even your own sister, whatever, okay? Because some people are jealous. Of what, when you're telling people what the prophetic dream or, um, the, you know, anything that God's blessing with you and you're, and you're telling people, you, th you might think that they may be happy for you, but no, these people ain't happy for you, bro. Okay, keep things to yourself because if Joseph would have kept those things to himself, now, it all happened. It was all designed to happen. But if, if that's to say Joseph just kept it to himself, that would have never happened. Okay, so always don't be so quick to tell people, even your own family, guys. I know it's crazy how it sounds, but, you know, this is true. So you will get unjustly betrayed by someone you trusted and loved. Okay, so we all know what happened to Joseph. Okay, even what happened to Jesus, with Judas and Jesus, right? Okay, he got unjustly betrayed, but in the midst of it all, I mean, Jesus got betrayed by, you know, majority of those people. Okay, majority of the people of the world, but he didn't lose trust and look what happened. Now he has dominion over this entire earth. Okay, so all about trusting in God. The Bible even says, blessed is a man who trusts in the Lord. Okay, number five is you start feeling overwhelmed of uh, overwhelming feeling of conviction. Yes. Okay, you start to feel overwhelmed and see when you, whenever you start to feel conviction, that's the Holy Spirit. A conviction of something that either you're doing wrong or good or whatever, right? A conviction you feel in your spirit, let's say, for instance, you get a conviction that you got to start praying more. Okay, you get a conviction of maybe you got to start fasting more. You get a conviction of you got to start reading the Bible more. You just feel that conviction. That is the Holy Spirit. Okay, so always understand that. Trust that conviction and apply it. Okay, and make sure you apply that conviction. So let's say the conviction is telling you to stop. Let's say there's a certain sin that you're battling with that you don't know is a sin. Or maybe you're just willfully giving over it. The conviction will kick in. Okay. And whenever you get the, one thing I know, so my walk, whenever I get the conviction, I feel like it's like a spiritual strength for me to stop doing whatever I'm doing. Okay. So always keep that in mind. You get, you get a strong, overwhelming feeling of conviction. Okay. God wants you to, to just keep on leveling up in life, to be the best version of yourself through Christ. Okay. So always keep that in mind when you're getting convicted of something that you're doing wrong. Okay. That's just a sign. You got to trust God more. And even though you might not understand why you're getting convicted, just trust God and, and make sure you're taking action. Okay, make sure you're taking action. So these are the five, five signs that God is telling you to trust them more. Number one is the unexpected storms. Number two is a lack of something. Okay, number three is you lose everything. Number four is you get be unjustly betrayed by someone who you trusted or loved. Okay, and, and number five is you, you start feeling overwhelmed, of, uh, overwhelmed feeling of conviction. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you made it this far, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. I love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.